These Latin characters represent the vowel sounds, which language-specific versions may vary, but still these five vowels might be called something like generic patterns. And have you ever noticed that there's a curious connection between the shapes of these Latin characters and uh, the spectral content of the corresponding sounds? Vowels are commonly defined in terms of formants, which are broad spectral peaks resulting from an acoustic resonance of the vocal tract. In comparative charts, vowels are presented as having an equal number of formants, and characterized by the frequencies of these formants, typically of the first two of them, in order of increasing frequency. However, such a pointwise specification rather hides some of the essence. We can see that the gap between the values of the first two formants varies among the vowels, and in some cases it is so small that in fact the two peaks do form a unitary uplift in the spectrum, given that the peaks are broad. Formants are expressed in absolute values, but these values are within the same range, and they constitute the same amount of sonic energy, so we have its various patterns of its distribution. It's like dealing with a piece of clay of constant mass. Let's take a generic sound as I said with the character A, which is A. Ah. This is an open and essentially unfiltered sound, just like an involuntary shout, and it tends to fill the entire spectrum rather than elevate local points. However, the intensity naturally decreases with increasing frequency, so we have a cone, and the symbol looks the same way. In contrast, in the U sound, most of the energy is near the fundamental tone, and the symbol also shows the center of gravity at the bottom. The O sound also doesn't have a large presence in the upper region of the spectrum, but neither does it have all the energy at the bottom. Instead, it forms a bulge in the middle region, above the fundamental tone, at the expense of other areas, and we can see this bubble in the corresponding symbol. The A and the E sounds stand out for their high frequencies. If you cut off the heights in these two, you get something close to O and U respectively. However, the boosting of high and high frequencies makes the lower areas weaker and weaker. The upper region of the A is somewhat lower than that of E, the latter being the highest. This allows the A sound to retain a notable mass in the middle, while at the same time forming a broad uplift in the heights, and this effect can be seen in the figure of 8 of the corresponding symbol. As for the E sound, the boosting of the top results in a sharper peak there, and a lack of energy below, except for the bass tone, and the character shows a thin figure that has either a dot at the top or serifs at both ends. The sounds of speech are various patterns in a closed range, similar to colors or basic shapes or Latin letters, which are also a limited set of combinations of strokes inscribed in a small rectangular area. As for the formants, there are only a vocal mechanism to implement these conceptual patterns. It also doesn't matter whether the text symbols are written by hand or printed, it's their conceptual forms that matter, and there's always some connection between form and meaning. In a closed system, few things are completely random.